Hello, let's organize our pictures in the command line on Linux. So holiday season is over and if you took a lot of pictures on your holiday and maybe you also got the pictures that the people you went together uh, took and you want to organize them based on the events that you went to together, that is the easiest way is to organize these pictures by date and time that they were taken. And in a lot of cases, a lot of uh, phones, for example, will name these picture files in general based on like year, month, and uh, then uh, day, and then uh, hour, minute, second. But sometimes these will have like different formats. So for example, if you are using Nextcloud to share your pictures, and you should use some cloud service, so do not share your pictures through some uh, social media uh, messaging apps, because those will generally... Uh, decrease your image quality a lot to save for their own uh, hosting costs so, and also will remove a lot of important metadata. So I personally like to use Nextcloud, but other cloud providers that will upload the files without change, that will do also. So Nextcloud, for example, if you use Nextcloud and you have like uh, an iPhone, Nextcloud will rename your files based on the date and time of the picture, but it will always use the uh, time zone that you are in at the time of uploading the picture. So if you p upload some of the people, maybe upload their pictures while they are on holiday and some of the people upload their pictures once they are home from the holiday, then because they are uploading from a different time zone, now the times will not match. And maybe some people have like a digital camera that will just rename or name these files in like a sequential order and uh, there's not much you can do. And you can see I already prepared a shell script for this. So let's take a look what uh, that shell script contains. So if we list everything out here, you can see that there is a photo renamer. So I will use NVIM to open this up. And we can see that basically what we do is uh, we are going through each of the files here and assess a few things about it. So we will use the identify command to get the exif uh, date and time. And we will uh, do some replacements on it using sed. And then we will also take a look at the time zone using this exif offset time information. So identify is a member of the image magic um, package generally. So if you go to man identify, you will see that it is, uh, well, it doesn't tell you about it. Yeah, here it is. It's part of the image magic suite of tools. So if you have image magic installed, you will have identify and you can use identify uh, dash uh, format and we'll use the, um, simple, the single uh, quotation marks and uh, person sign, and what is this, the uh, bracket, I guess, and exif, uh, and we need an asterisk here, and then close, and then let's give a file name, maybe this one, and I will pipe this into less so we can scroll. So it will give you all the exif data. Exif is kind of a standardized format in which most of the modern cameras will store the metadata about the picture. So these are the things we need. We need date and uh, time. And generally the date and time original is what we need, but in digital pictures, the digitization date and everything, this should be same. I just use the date time original. And um, well, if we want only that part, then what we do is instead of uh, having this asterisk here, we will type in date, date, time, original. And, uh, well, it does not print a line break at the end. So this is kind of weird here, but now you got the time and date of the original uh, file. But the problem is that if we want to hand manipulate this time and date, so maybe it is not in the time zone, which we are interested in, then we might want to change this. And for that, we are using the, uh, the, what is this? The date command. The date command will help us to convert, uh, time and dates between time zones. So for that, we need to get, uh, to change a few things. So we need to change the, uh, first two 
columns into dashes because uh, as you could see here, here the exif data contains the time or both the time and the date using columns and the date command will not accept these columns here. So we'll have to change that with the set command into the uh, dashes. And uh, I will not, I did not memorize this set command. So you have to believe me that this works. And so next what we want is to get the time zone which we can get using the exif offset time parameter. So if you uh, check that out, so this is going to be our time and date and then offset time. Yeah, you can see it's plus nine because it was taken in the Korean time. And then what we use is the date command where using the date if we just type in date, it will give me the date in the current uh, formats that was provided by the locale. But what I can also do date plus, I don't know, year dash, I guess month is uh, something like this. And then this will give me the, the date specified by the format after this plus sign. But what else I can do is I can use the date command with the dash D parameter where I can type in any kind of uh, time and date and uh, maybe like this and this will tell me that this was August 25 was a uh, Thursday but it will tell me of course in Hungarian and if I put in a time zone here in this specific format that is actually given us by the EXIF so if I say this was in plus one in the time zone with uh, the, uh, what is it, GMT plus one or UTC plus one, then you can see that it converted the time to my time zone. So when combining this dash D parameter and combining it with the uh, this plus sign for the format, that is what we are using in this script. So I get the time date using the uh, the identity dash format, uh, exif date time original, I get then the time zone using identity dash format with the offset time. And these become two variables, time date and time zone variables. And then this is the P time date, which is going to be kind of the final format of the time and date I want, uh, I'm interested in for my pictures. And so I will use the dash D date dash D command to have my formatted date and the proper time zone here. And I will put it into the format that is shown here. So this is just the year dash month dash day. Uh, what is it? White space. And then hour, minute and second. These are also dashes between them. So this will be my file names beginning. And then what I, I do another check here is that if the file is already like the first 16 characters, with these are six, going to be 16 characters for the uh, for the new file name, and the, or, or 17, maybe, I think it will be 17, but if the first 16 characters match, so the last second does not match that, I don't care about that, but if the every other uh, thing matches except for the last second, I will not change the file name. So I will, then I will accept that whatever the file name is that's correct, and I'm not renaming it because if I renamed it, that would just confuse my syncing software. So I sync my pictures between computers. And uh, so if I just rename all the pictures, even those that were in the correct uh, format already, that would just uh, use my uh, disks too much on all the computers. So I just ignored those. But everything that do not match, I will create the new name based on the time date. And if there is another picture that already has that name, I will just put this uh, dot one at the end and rename once that's done. So how we can test this is for example, if, uh, let me clear the screen here. Let's see what our files are. So we have, for example, these files which have this number at the end and this once I run the photo renamer, these will not be renamed if uh, the file name is correct. Of course, the one which is in the wrong time zone, that will be renamed. And uh, 
Maybe what I could do is maybe I could just create a copy for one of these files and uh, see how the renaming works now. So now I have two files which have the same time and date they were taken. So let's see what uh, photo renamer uh, does here. So it will go through all the image files and it will print me all the files that it renamed. So you can see that this one got renamed. This one got renamed because it was in the wrong time zone. But this file was not renamed because it was already named in a way that is consistent with our naming scheme. And here you can see that DSC uh, 12 and 13, they both got named to the same uh, time and date, but one of them got like this one at the end, so there is no conflicting files. And of course, if it's accidentally someone uploaded the same picture twice, and that's why you got it, it will be very easy to find these duplicates and then remove them by hand. So this is my method of uh, organizing my pictures from the vacations that I've been on. And uh, so you can use this script yourself. You can write a similar script. Maybe you don't like the format or something like that. You can just uh, change this format. You can read in the manual for the uh, date command how the format's working. So maybe you only want, you want the four number year or you might want like a kind of a different type of format. Maybe you want to see the nanoseconds too or you want AM or PM and uh, whatever you want, you will be able to find in the manual for date. And so this is the end of today's video. I hope you found it useful. Maybe you learned something new about uh, the command line, how useful it, it can be, and with just a little scripting, how many things you can achieve. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.